A histogram or stem plot can reveal distinctly non-normal features of a distribution, such as outliers, pronounced skewness, or gaps in clusters. If the graph appears to be roughly in symmetric, symmetric and unimodal, it may be normal, um, but you may want to check to be sure. And the best way to check is by using another graph called the normal quantile plot, also known as a normal probability plot. Generally, we would use a computer to generate these plots. It's difficult to draw the graph completely and accurately by hand. However, so that you understand the process by which this graph is completed, we will do a small example which demonstrates the basic idea. So the basic steps for generating the graph are to first put the data in order from smallest to largest, record which percentile of the data each value occupies, find the z-scores at these percentiles, and then plot each data point against the corresponding z. So if the data is close to a normal model, the normal quantal plot will lie close to a straight line. If it models the standard normal distribution, where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1, it will be close to a 45 degree line, where x would equal z. So for example, how many TVs do you have? The responses given were 2, 1, 3, 5, 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4. So if we go ahead and put the data in order, there's 1, 1. There are two twos, there are four threes, there are two fours, and there is one five. So there are ten data values, so we might say that the first one was the tenth percentile, the second one would be the twentieth percentile, the third, the thirtieth, then the fortieth the 50th, the 60th, the 70th, the 80th, the 90th, and the 100th percentile. Um, and so then you guys would use your z-score table and you would find the corresponding um, z-scores that go with these percentiles. So for example, the 10th percentile means 10% are at or below, so you'd have a lower tail probability of 0.10. Um, and so we would continue on in this manner, um, but when you got to the 100th percentile, there's really nowhere on the z-score table where we could find that value. So to get around this, what we do instead is we use the midpoints of each of these values. So um, one, we're going to call the 5th percentile, two, we're going to call the 15th percentile, Three, or this next two we're going to call the 25th percentile, and so on. So the last, last data value is going to be the 95th percentile. So now when we actually go to find the z-scores, the first one we look up, is the fifth percentile, so that means that there is a uh, probability of 0.05 in the lower tail, and so the z star value that goes along with that is negative 1.645. Looking up the 15th percentile, so remember the probabilities are in the middle of the z-score table and then you go to the edges to get the z-scores. The 15th percentile is negative 1.04. The 25th percentile will be negative 0.67. The 35th percentile is negative 0.39. The 45th is negative 0.13. 55th is positive 0.13. The 65th is positive 0.39. The 75th is positive 0.67, the 85th is positive 1.04, and the 95th percentile is positive 1.645. So then what we would do next is we would plot the z-scores and the x-values. We're going to put the x-values on the y-axis and the z-scores on the x-axis. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and add in a y-axis, that'll be 0. So I'll have this one be negative 1. This 
will be negative 2. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And then plotting my x values, my highest data value is 5, so I'll let that be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so now plotting the... Um, Z scores, negative 1.645 would be, you know, about here, and then it's X, the data value was 1. Negative 1 1.04 might be about here, and the number of TVs was, oops, 2. Um, negative 1.67 might be about here. Its data value was also 2. Um, negative 0.39 would be maybe here. Its data value was 3. Negative 0.13 be about here. Its data value was 3. Then we had positive 0.13. Positive 0.39, positive 0.67, positive 1.04, and 1.645, which is about here. So then the, you look at the normal probability plot that came out. And um, basically, if the line of best fit is a straight line, that means approximately normal. And if you get a curved line, that means it's not normal and it's either skewed or has outliers. So in general, when you're interpreting a normal probability plot, straight lines are good, curved lines are bad. All right. You can do this on your calculator, and when I figure out how to get my computer to um, show this, I will go ahead and do a video on that. Um, but for now, the instructions are here. You can read it over and try to do it, um, but we'll look at that in another video. Um, so now we're going to look at some computer-generated graphs on the next page in your packets so you guys can go ahead and turn to those. And these are sideways. So I am going to stop for now and I will um,